Thank you for joining us on the program this morning. Take a look at the papers and try to make sense of it. My name is Felicity Ezewike and I am joined for today's conversation uh, by Plus TV Africa's news editor, Kayode Ladende. Thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Happy Democracy Day. Uh, happy Democracy Day. All right, we'll start with the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, PTF meets governors, security agencies as COVID-19 cases surge. And then we have uh, three riders uh, record 681 new infections emerge nationwide as total cases reach 14,554. Majority of Nigerians at risk of contracting coronavirus, says federal government. Worship centers, Lagos deploys security agents to enforce compliance. I wonder how that is really going to work because we know that some on certain streets, we have like 10 mushroom churches. Some you don't even know there is a church in there until you hear their big uh, drums and stuff like that. But let's see what happens uh, with it. Uh, there are other headlines here. Um, lawmakers, golf, officials, by APC form for Akere Dolu. Esparts doubt implementation of Senate as Senate passes 10.8 trillion naira revised budget. Uh, plenty of headlines this morning. We have the one on Wadumi, slain policeman's family, six damages, killer soldiers prosecution. Lawan Wajabia Mila plan to meet Buhari over insecurity. And of course, June 12th, Afenifer Tinubu Atiku, others hail Abiola, Lagos hosts youth. There are more headlines, but let's just uh, start the conversation going to get an insight on some of these um, uh, stories. Just look at it. Nigeria first of all, got the highest number, and then the PTF is meeting with governors over. I think the, it's quite important that that meeting takes place. The fact that um, we have some kind of conflicting directives and the way these governors are implementing some of these directives, it's a source of concern. Uh, looking at the fact that um, you will see some, even before federal government even gave a hint that we should have churches, we should have some religious bodies coming out to do practice their religions. We've seen some governors, you know, giving that go ahead. And I think I want to give a thumbs up for some churches or some denominations who say it is not time. We can continue with our online services. H however, I, I probably I may not use the same word you use, the word mushroom churches. You know, to a large extent, some of these churches can't even afford the idea of online. Some of them don't even have Android phones. And some of them feel totally, you know, alienated, forgotten, sort of. alienated sort of from worshipping their God or listening to their pastors or their imams, so to say. So probably there might be a, a reason to justify their coming together, but it must be within the stipulated guidelines, it's, it's shocking and it's so sad that despite the noise that we are making from this end, that's from the media, it appears some people are totally unperturbed and we are having surge. We have not had a peak. You understand, we're having surge day by day. The numbers are increasing. People are doing things with reckless abandon. So there is need for governors because the idea is if we like the who will always say there is a national and subnational the subnational to take their cue from the national body irrespective of the style of government you're practicing but if, if, if we're, we're looking at this headline now it's saying governors um pcm to meet governors security agencies for as covid 19 cases increase but even with the increasing numbers, we are reducing the restrictions where uh, very soon um, interstate travel will be opened up. The economy is, uh, people are allowed to move. All they say is, you know, wear your mask and all of that. Is, are we now, when we see this kind of headline, does it really reassure you? Because basically, with the re releasing of the restriction, the implication is that you are your own security. If you, exactly. If you don't take responsibility, totally. you catch that's, the that's, disease. That's a realistic point of view. Uh, for the fact that, um, as we speak, or even when this whole issue started, you could see that uh, the security agents were overwhelmed. Apart from the fact that some of them were also involved in some kind of shady deals. Uh, I, I, I used to stay, or I still stay along... Uh, 
you know, the acts between Lagos and Ogun, and I see all kinds of shenanigans happening on this road. So, even when you want to absorb them that they are being overwhelmed, but when you see such kind of shady deals they do, probably that's why the governors want to come in to say that, I think if you have to enforce the law, do it without any kind of reservation. However, the old box stops on our table as individuals to say that we want you to eat, since we can't take care of the palliatives that you demand. We want you to go about your businesses. We want you to preserve your livelihood, so to say, because you said it's about protection of lives, which we do the guidelines that have been rolled out, and the preservation of livelihood. Since the preservation of livelihood seems to gain more ascendancy than the protection of life, which a lot of people are not paying attention to, it's time to now beg the people, let the people know that you have a reason to leave. You have to be conscious of all these things. Otherwise, going back to the life you used to have might be detrimental. These numbers are not concocted. Probably government also need to be more transparent in seeing yeah, this thing. That argument saying, has been given that they should, that the, the locations where there's increasing cases mm -hmm. are coming okay, from. There's the been community. argument for it that if you tell people these are the areas, it might increase the level of oh, consciousness and, I you know, totally agree. I totally agree. I, I, somebody said it when this issue started, and I took it for granted, but now it's making a lot of sense to me that by the time you, Lagos was doing that at the time, they were mentioning the local governments. They will tell you the number of cases in local government, but that is not very pronounced. I think we should also have that update That's regularly. Fine. And somebody said, by the time you go to local government, I now mention streets. By the time somebody knows there are COVID-19 patients on my street, maybe somebody would not need to be told to stay indoor. I was just looking at the other side, yeah, well, where other, the stigma might be on the, on the high. Yeah. But I think we have gotten to that stage where we need to let them know that COVID-19 is very close to your door and you need to be conscious. Because people will be like, no, I know, I, I, I know Felicity now. She doesn't have COVID. I know there is no, she doesn't have COVID. Therefore, I can shake hands with her. I can do all the necessary things that we used to do. But I think people need to be reminded that there's every tendency that Felicity may have even been tested negative, and she has just touched a door while coming, or she has and probably she touched a gate, and that's the reason why you should avoid such contacts. All right, let's take a look at other headlines. The issue of rape, there is a picture on the front page of the Punch newspaper showing uh, people protesting um, increasing uh, number of cases. We have them in Jaws, in Enugu, and in Lagos. That's it on your screen now. Uh, reports and shame the rapist. That's one very prominent um, placard there. And there's something else that I would like your thoughts on as well. Uh, a thousand ghost workers uncovered in Quarra's payroll. Officials arrested. Yeah, yeah. as much as I'm not going to dodge that question, but I think the issue of rape is still very, very important. Uh, may I suggest, I, this may not be a popular opinion, that rather than having protests, rather than marching the streets, why don't we continue with these social media handles? Why don't we continue the engagement with all the you know, mediums that you can talk about? Because the side effect of this, I think I, I saw in one story yesterday, I've forgotten the particular country, where some of these demonstrators were, were, uh, got infected with COVID-19. You know, putting people at risk in the name of expressing your view may be counterproductive. I'm well, just so saying on the, that on the, on the flip side, some would argue that without the amplification, both on social media, not everybody's on social media, mind you. Some people actually take hiatus from it because of the toxicity, uh, toxicity that you see there. Uh, they are also saying that without all these protests, we wouldn't um, hear the governors coming up to say they are declaring a state of emergency um, on the violence on, against I, women. I, I, as much as I don't want to argue that with you, but it's more of what they see in the media, the kind of amplification we are giving it in the media, not necessarily street protests. What is happening across the world over George Floyd's death, trust me, we may not be able to handle it. The spike is getting crazy. As we speak, we have more than 2 million confirmed cases in America. 
Don't tell me there is no connection to some of these protests. They are yeah, doing. I actually saw a report where they said one um, an infected person was confirmed after um, the protest. They took I think that was the story I was referring to. So okay. I'm saying that let's be careful. As much as emotions are running, issues are coming out, can we just be a bit, you know, strategic Cautious. about it so that we don't have more cases on our hands than what the men is we're trying to you know, Control. deal with. All right, let's go so to... So on the, on, the, on the ghost uh, workers, I, I, I just feel that um, technology is the way out. Um, why government will continue to say that um, ghost workers will be... Because I feel this is just playing to the gallery, having headlines with these things. We, you should be able to know these people. There should be mechanism to say that some people have been collecting these salaries. Whoever is responsible, whoever top civil servant is responsible with this money. They've been arrested, the whole idea. but will they be tried? Let's, that's let, another let's, issue. let's have their names published. <laughs> let's see more deliberate effort you know, to deal with this kind of menace rather than just giving us loud headlines and uh, nothing happens after that. <laughs> You're a skeptic journalist. All right, let's continue with the nation newspaper. Um, the big one here is government schools to remain shut. That's uh, the screamer. It has uh, two riders. It says there is need to shield senior citizens, others with underlying ailments. Uh, rising virus positive cases worrisome. And then inside the paper, you get to see Nigeria records highest 681 cases. Uh, domestic flights return date not fixed. Uh, some would say that's some um, good news for now. Uh, but, I mean, eventually we need to do some of these things. Um, some of the headlines, Magu, ESCC recovered 980 Billionaira. I'll take that again. EFCC uncovered 980 billion naira assets in five years. Okorocha forfeits 7.9, um, I think, um, billion naira um, to the EFCC. The EFCC says that money, I think I read a bit of that story. They've uh, given it uh, back to the state government. And then we have uh, 39 million jobs may go, says Oshibanjo Spano. VP proposes way out. Edo APC battle shifts to court of appeal. Edo APC battle shifts to court of appeal. And then we also have two arrested with 36 ATM cards. You take your pick. Quite, quite, quite loaded. Yes. I, 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 I think I want to start with um, what I call my forte, you know, the idea of the primaries. I think uh, the governor should read the signs to get ready for direct primaries. You know, making an attempt to challenge that suit is already sending a wrong signal that probably is not popular within the party. It's a party system, and it's so unfortunate that uh, he has to emerge as a candidate of the party. He was only elected for four years. For him to get that four years again, he needs to emerge as the party's choice and not the people's choice, because there is this impression that he has done so well. If you have done so well, that is just for four years. For you to do another four years, you must be chosen by your party. So rather than, you know, dissipating a lot of energy on it doesn't have to be direct primary, probably you have seen the signs that, oh, the, in quotes, the rigging may have been completely planned out and is ready to, you know, cry out. Maybe it should let us know. Rather than saying what the NWC has done, Unfortunately, his political foe happens to be the head of that NWC. Because what he's saying is, let the neck, whom he believe is superior to NWC, should decide. So for me, I think the governor should just put his uh, strategy right, get ready, talk to party members. And if you feel the party members are not behind you, definitely you don't deserve their ticket. Don't tell me what next. Don't ask me what next. But you know, I have a, you know, I have a lot of you, stuff, you, but you, I, put you, a, <laughs> I put a string on it. Um, let's take a look at some of the ones. The money is discovered, um, recovered by the EFCC and uh, our coaches. Felicity, do you know that that's just the permanent for feature? There are a lot of money still hanging in temporary for feature for some of these looters. You know, like uh, the late, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember that orator from the north. Uh, he would say, 
we have looters, not leaders. And that's the case we have had over the years. And like I always say, I'm not too impressed with the screaming headlines. Let's see what we do with these recovered funds. It is not just enough to return this money to government. Let us also see what the government is going to do with this money. And you can see that kind of embarrassment that we had with the U.S. government returning our bachelor to and us. And giving us And terms. giving us, what do you want to do with it? Tell us what you want to do. We want to monitor it. That's the feedback they must have gotten. And federal government had to tell them we are using it for Second Niger Bridge. We are using it for Lagos about our expressway. That is the next conversation. We are not really... It's okay to say that this money had been recovered. But let the governors tell us, especially in the case of Imo State, it doesn't matter the figure. Bottom line is money was recovered. Back to the and so thing. let's see what you do with it and not just... Uh, the huge figures. You know, sometimes when I see these figures, I wish some of them will have a direct impact on me as an individual. All right, let's move on to the Guardian newspaper and see what we can do with it in the time left. Uh, Nigeria must restructure to dignify June 12th. That's the big one with the man of the moment smiling even uh, many years after he has passed on, MKO Abiola. I'll take that again just for emphasis. Nigeria must restructure to dignify June 12th. It has a couple of riders. Uh, let's see what we can take. Anyoku Afenifere restate calls for true federalism. Atiku urges citizens to evaluate leadership requirement. Tinubu Lords Buhari, Heroes of Democracy. Uh, we also have uh, the one on Shibanjo's panel warning that um, over 39 million people are going to lose their jobs. Um, underneath it, we have the Buhari's Executive Order 10 subverts federal system. Wabwe they insists. Um, there's been a lot of conversation about the executive order uh, 10. I get, I'll, uh, let me just leave you to make a choice. We'll go. So uh, what, uh, uh, what uh, Wambez is saying, that the executive... In Wambez is saying that Buhari's executive order 10 mm -hmm. subverts federal system. Wow. He's insisting that that is the case. Yeah, I, I think it's neither here nor there. But for a lot of uh, legal minds, they believe that uh, we should look at the intent rather than this argument on uh, subverting the powers of the federating units, which are the governors. I think um, the executive ten order is a right decision, if you ask me. Um, why do you still want to have you know, that kind of predominance over other arms of government. Might that be the reason why we're having these uh, governors having a meeting and then exactly. saying that they're going to hold off on it for exactly. now? Exactly. They went to the president and the president said, oh, I will direct you to the AGF and the AGF got back to them. There's Speaking no going back. Speaking from two sides of the mouth. No, the AGF the one, are, they are saying that they, they, they are encouraging you it. You need to get used to the way politicians speak. You cannot expect governors to come to you and just tell them, go back. I'm not changing my mind. What he has done is to transfer them to the person who is in charge of the law in case they were able to come with some sections of the law. Go to the AGF who can interpret it. And the AGF has interpreted to say there is no going back. The executive order stands. But for now, Let it's the whole... arms of government have their independence. Why is, what is this noise about the money? Because when you have the money, when you pay the money, definitely you decide what happened. You, you, you control things. And so, I don't know, maybe the governors are giving us something we don't understand. And probably Prof is also saying something we do not understand. Maybe Prof is seeing beyond the action that we are seeing. Maybe he's looking at the intent. Probably because if the federal government or the president wants to still have, you know, powers over the third chair of government, that is too much to handle. I, I totally agree. That is a suspicion. But let's look at the fact that let the, the other arms of government have their independence. It might just mean that we will have more accountability partners who will have to tell us what they've done with the money. And let's hope we will not have too many suspects in EFCC's uh, custody. <laughs> Let me just naively say I'm looking forward to a time when 
politics will not be determining the welfare of the people, rather mm. leadership inspired by true concern for the people's welfare will be the driving that's not, force. That's not a naive comment. It is a naive Very sentiment deep. because, <laughs> I mean, we can't seem to get away from politicking and how it affects the welfare of the people. It, from, it, from what you it, just it, said. It's, it's, sad, it's sad that that's, that seems to be the practice everywhere. You listen to Trump. Trump is looking at the fact that uh, the George Floyd's issue is deeply affecting his chances of coming back. A lot of people are throwing tantrums at the government in power, even when the issue happened. You know, th there is a true federalism, so to say, in America. This, this issue happened in Minneapolis. But people now made it a bigger issue to say that, hey, Mr. Trump, you are a racist. You are doing this. You are doing that. And he has come back to tell them that I believe in American police. I stand by American police and blah, blah, blah. And according to the report, it was a subtle form of campaign. So as far as this man is concerned, let's forget how many lives are being attacked. Let's forget how many lives are being wasted. Let me talk about how to get into power in November 3. Unfortunately. So, um, so sad. Final thoughts uh, to wrap things up. The, I wanted to speak on our smiling um, hero on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Nigeria must restructure to dignify June 12. What's your take on that? Yeah, I think uh, for us, uh, it's, it's okay to talk about restructure, but to attach it to June 12 is what I do not understand. Because as at, at that time when Nabiola contested, Restructuring wasn't the issue. It was going to come into this kind of presidential system of government where there's so much concentration at the center. So what Abiola stood for, what he still stands for in his grave and what, is, what he represented, it's more of bye-bye to poverty. It's more of manifestos that are, that are, that are direct-based. And the, con the contestation on restructuring, it's a different conversation. Probably it's a good platform. So look at it that where have we been 20 years on 21 years of uninterrupted democracy do we continue you know going cap in full to abuja to ask for money let's have this federation unit control their resources and we should have governance closer to the people rather than the way we are having it Kyrie. Thank you very much. It's been My fun pleasure. having a conversation with you on the program. All right, and that's how we wrap things up. I hope you made sense of some of these headlines. And when you read it, you look at it with a newer perspective. My name is Felicity Ezewike. I will see you soon enough to take care.